Hi, thank you so much for joining me. For friends who have stuck around, thank you. Thank you for sticking around. I know I've been completely AWOL for the last uh, year, year and a half. Um, thank you for not disappearing on me. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm an, I'm an artist based out of Bangalore, India. And uh, this is my studio where I do um, my design projects, uh, art and craft. And uh, the YouTube, uh, this YouTube channel is basically just uh, a space where I document these uh, projects. I have been away for uh, for a very good reason. Um, I'll talk about that soon. Um, this I wanted to divide this video in three parts. One where I talk to you about uh, my updates, my personal updates. Um, the second part is the actual tutorial where I um, where I show you how to make uh, these earrings. And. The third part is the giveaway how, where I explain what's in the giveaway and uh, how you can participate in it. If you want to skip to the tutorial, this is when it starts. If you want to skip right to the giveaway, this is when it'll start. Um, updates about me. Uh, I had a baby. Um, I shared this on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I had a baby. Uh, in August of 2018 um, he's beautiful his name is Drona uh, inspired by the great Mahabharat uh, character Dronacharya I wanted while I was picking names I wanted um, a short name um, a powerful sounding name um, a name that had a lot of character and something that was timeless um, I didn't want a name that is fancy now but will go out of fashion in, in a couple of decades um, and uh, Drona was unique it had a lot of character it has um, a beautiful background story uh, it's powerful it's so part of our tradition so part of our um, our history and 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 culture and um, I just absolutely love that uh, Drona is 11 months old. He's beautiful. He's he's amazing. Um, I will share a lot of his videos and um, uh, trivia about him <laughs> in the upcoming videos. Um, I nearly, I initially thought I initially thought I won't share. Um, I might be someone who would want to not share that part of uh, my life, but he's amazing. He's just adorable. He's um, is part of my life and I um, I don't see why I have to um, hide away from that hide away from that um, I don't see why I have to hide him away um, I want to have more screen presence I've been wanting to do this for so long but I I'm so camera shy I am completely I'm 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 extremely camera shy um, I hate my voice I usually don't like what I'm wearing or how I'm looking um, and uh, to be honest it's uh, I'm never usually present <laughs> when I'm in the studio um, but I want to change that um, um, I had an amazing pregnancy uh, I had an amazing very healthy very smooth pregnancy I had a difficult very difficult postpartum journey I'm still going through that a little bit uh, things have gotten extremely better and I feel like my old self but it was tough it was really hard um, I'm thinking maybe I'll do another video uh, discussing postpartum journey only because I feel that we don't talk about it enough uh, postpartum was really 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 tough um, I mean I have had amazing support from my parents and my husband. My parents, I have to mention the the amount of help um, and love and care uh, and support my parents have shown towards uh, towards us. Uh, I knew they were uh, amazing parents, but these guys are exceptional grandparents as well. Um, Drona loves them. Um, and uh, we were living with them all this while I tried to move back and the corona thing happened and I was very 
honestly I can't uh, do without the help at the moment um, so we're still living with them <laughs> and I think I will never move out um, but we live they live close by so I'm able to come spend some time in my studio I've missed this space I uh, am planning to spend the days here uh, like a 10 to say, 3 or 4 o'clock every day or every alternate days to begin with um, so I can get um, a jump start on my um, projects as well um, I, I'm dividing up the studio space um, into three categories I one I'll be working on design projects um, stuff that I've already done um, design for stationery design decoupage supplies um, I don't know uh, decoupage supplies stencils maybe stamps uh, stickers and things like that um, things that I've been doing things I like things that I know will sell um, things that will help financially um, the second part is I want to try illustration I've been wanting to do this for ever since um, college and uh, I just didn't um, take the leap then but um, this is something I really 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 am passionate about and uh, I know I will enjoy it I just haven't uh, given myself the time and effort and the practice to be honest uh, but I want to do that um, as well and the third is um, craft I want to explore um, other um, types of craft not just decoupage um, decoupage was something that I just stumbled upon and everyone liked it and I was asked uh, to work on tutorials and I was honestly and I was exploring that medium and I loved it um, I will still work on decoupage but I do desperately want to try other things um, and I want to document all of that if that is something that you guys like um, let me know I can uh, make more videos of that as well um, what else so yes that's um, I'll be taking it slow um, I'm uh, I'm hoping to make uh, more content uh, for you and for me um, and uh, thank you for thank you so much for sticking around and showing your love and support um, throughout um, this journey that's uh, that's about it uh, I hope you enjoy I'll be leaving all the links to the supplies I'm using today in the description box below make sure you check that out if you still have any questions don't hesitate to ask me these are MDF earring bases they come in a lot of shapes and sizes they're pretty lightweight and uh, thin most of the times they are sold in a pack of three that is two earrings and a pendant i sometimes use both the pendants as uh, earrings as well for the base coat i am using gesso by camel you could use chalk paint or uh, white acrylic paint or just spray white I'm using a piece of sponge to dab I like the texture that the sponge leaves you could uh, just use a brush I usually take just a little bit of gesso on my palette and go back and get some more uh, when this is over um, just to make sure this doesn't dry up I'm, uh, before the gesso I'm going to wipe the bases clean um, the edges especially these are laser cut and uh, I I feel there's a lot of shoot that is still left left over in the beginning when I didn't know this uh, if I applied the gesso directly it would uh, that shoot would mix up and give me a, a dirty brown uh, look you could take a wet rag or a, a rag dipped in soap uh, I'm just using a baby wipe that was around so the next step is gesso my rule of thumb is i apply very little gesso i apply thin even coats and go back and go back with a second coat if necessary once it's dry make sure to uh, gesso the back side and the edges as well if you think the sponge and gesso is leaving too much texture you can go back once it's slightly dry 
um let's say 30 30 seconds or in a minute after you've um applied gesso go back with the sponge and just dab it again it will reduce the amount of um bubbles that are created i'll try and show that to you um here the base on my right i've dabbed it twice you can see it's a uh, lot cleaner than the the other one this is again a personal preference i um sometimes like to obsess over details <laughs> so i do this but uh, if most of the time it's it's not required for today today's earrings i'll be using i'll be working on the circular base and the square drying time for gesso is about 10 15 minutes um if the weather is uh, nice and warm and sunny otherwise uh, you could use a heat gun or leave it to dry uh, in the sun for some time it's very important to make sure that it's nice and dry before you start uh, applying gesso on the other side uh, the back side and the edges make sure to cover these with gesso as well okay pro tip or let's call it life hack um a lot of you ask me why your gesso is peeling off from your surface one of the reasons is if you have dried gesso on your fingers it tends to then stick to the your surface and and together they it peels off um gesso that's on your surface as well uh keeping your hands clean um eliminates that problem that's something that i've discovered and now i make sure to wash my hands or wipe my hands clean between every uh coat starting off with the round napkins i'm picking a nice floral print um actually i i ended up picking <laughs> floral print for both the earrings i figured it we all need a little bit of cheer around this time a uh, nice bright summer prints uh will just look nice cute and peppy the trick when you are cutting your napkin is to make sure that you have extra on all sides because you want the you will be wrapping the napkin on over the edges so make sure you have a uh, sufficient napkin on all sides it's always better to cut more than cut less in this case for gluing down the napkins i'm using gel medium uh you could use any decoupage glue or mod podge I usually use a thick brush for gluing down um the napkin but uh in this case because the base is really small I'm using a thin brush the brush I generally use is say 6 to 8 number um the one I'm using right now is a number 3 this will vary from um uh, brand to brand but uh, you get the general idea these printed napkins are generally three ply You'll remove the two extra layers at the bottom and use only the printed layer. Place the tissue um place the base in the center of the tissue. Make sure that your tissue is able to wrap on all sides. Uh and I'll put it in place and I will work in small sections. Um I use very little glue for gluing it down. Once you have the glue down, uh you press the napkin down to the surface. You can use your finger you could use uh, a piece of tissue paper or you could use uh, a cling film i generally use the other two the layers that i just discarded i use i just crush them and use them to press down the napkin they're pretty soft and uh, works very well all the links to the supplies i'm using today will be in the description box below do check it out Once the side the front side is glued down I will now work on the edge press it down well and leave it around for, and leave it aside to dry I repeat the process on the other bases
the napkin generally has perforations on the edge and if you're pressing it down well enough um those things tend to disappear i'll try and zoom in here and uh, hopefully the camera can pick it up you can tell the difference between the glued down area and the napkin that isn't glued down yet While I am doing this in the background, I wanted to mention a couple of things. The bases, uh, you generally get them in uh, square, circles, ovals, um, and rectangles. I've bought these bases from Crafted Connect, a brand that um, that is owned by Jasmine Sitiki. She's from Bombay, um, and uh, apart from the basic, um, apart from the basic. shapes she also customizes uh, bases to your um, to your likes and to your needs um the the bases that you saw in the beginning the ones that had holes at the bottom um are all uh, made are all custom made for me i designed them and she made them for me she uh, that way uh, i love working with her because um she's always there to help out and uh, give me custom uh she's ready to help me with custom orders another store that i've used uh, the bases from is um crafts lane they also make very similar looking mdf uh, bases when i bought it from them last year they had um they just had the circle and the oval shapes um but i think they have more uh, designs now you should check uh, out that site too next step is sanding um i'm using a thin sandpaper a wet and dry sandpaper from 3m the sandpaper has to be um really fine um it should feel like your nail file anything um more coarse will could hurt your paper I'm carefully sanding off the edges. I make sure that the napkin is nice and dry before I sand. The napkin tends to uh, tear otherwise. These are uh, these are running prints, so my clients uh, know that that they will not get to similar looking pieces. Um, so I um, cut random. Uh, I cut whichever part of the napkin that I like. Uh, I'm not looking to match the sides. If you are, then you might want to carefully cut um, the repeat patterns um, and make sure it kind of looks like a continuous print or it looks um, uh, symmetric on both sides. I have done that. Uh, I have done that for a couple of designs as well. I'll put up some pictures of those uh, later in the video. Next step is gluing the napkin down from the top. I am using the same mod podge and uh starting with the edges I'm pressing it down pressing it down firmly and uh applying a layer of uh gel medium on the top as well this will just ensure that the napkin is nicely sealed from the bottom and top again you could use mod podge or any other decoupla decoupage glue that you have on hand I'm leaving it aside to dry. I like to leave it on a plastic sheet just so that the um gel medium doesn't stick to the paper or my surface. Uh plastic sheet will ensure it's a it's a clean uh clean look once it's dry. I'm repeating the process on the other bases as well. Gel medium also takes uh just about 10 to 15 minutes to dry dry to touch but i like to leave it overnight or sometimes even a couple of days just so it's nice just so that it's nice and dry before the next coat usually i'm working in a hurry 
and uh, i don't give, give it enough time but uh, ideally i'd like to give it at least a day to dry really well I'm cutting the napkin for the the other side now. This can be slightly more snug. We will not be wrapping this on the edge because the the edge already has the design on it. The edge already has the napkin. We will just be sticking it on the surface. The same process. I'm applying a little glue and tapping it down, working in small sections. sanding off the extra bits uh, you have to be very gentle here make sure that the um, the paper that was already stuck on the other side is not uh, coming off just strike the edge very gently with the sandpaper and it will come right off I'm going over the edges again just to make sure it's nice and sealed. I'm applying just I'm applying gel medium on the top, sealing the second side. I'd like to leave this alone for a day or two. I for the sake of the video, I've just let it dry for 15-20 minutes and I will show you the next step. But if you're trying this at home and generally the earrings that I, I make that I sell, I make sure to give it enough drying time. The last step on the basis is a top coat. I'm using Ecuador by Asian Paints. This is a water-based varnish. You could use any top coat varnish that you have on hand. This varnish is tried and tested and works very well for me on various surfaces. Um, it's water resistant, water resistant, heat proof. Um, and dust and scratch proof it works very well for earrings I usually pour some out into an airtight jar and uh, use it out of there I don't like using it directly out of the um, the original jar thin even coats up I apply it on the sides and on the front I let it dry for a couple of days Oops. I let it dry for a couple of days and then turn over and varnish the second side. The napkin has covered up the main earring hole. You could um, pierce it with uh, a safety pin or I'm using an eye pin in, in this case. You could do this before the varnish or after the varnish. For the round ones, I'll I'll do it after the varnish, just so I'll show you the difference. And uh, for the square ones, I am poking the hole now and uh, varnishing over that. It's just a very tiny, small uh, bit of napkin. It you could do it before or after; it doesn't matter. Okay, varnish and I've set it aside. All the jewelry findings that I use, I've bought them from Itsy Bitsy, except the cutting plier. Um, this was a gift, um, but the rest of them, um, the, the cutting plier is from the US, but the rest of them are from Itsy Bitsy. I'm just going to pull out. I'm just going to pull out the findings that I want for both the bases. 
I'm using gold for the square and I'll use antique bronze for the circular bases. Itsy Bitsy had a huge sale a couple of years ago and uh, I randomly went and bought, I actually honestly emptied the entire shelf. They had everything for 80% off. So they generally uh, have silver, gold, antique bronze and nickel. They have findings in these four metal. Uh, but off late I haven't seen them uh, display bronze findings anymore. Um, I'll have to check. I'll have to check if they plan on getting that back. There are lots of other um, online stores that are selling these uh, jewelry findings. While the bases are, I worked on today are drying, uh, uh, you can see them on the top left corner. I have uh, the same exact bases um, done and ready uh, from I think a couple of months ago. Um, and to in, in the interest of saving time, I will be working on these. You'll see that they look very similar, but they're not exactly the same. The prints are, it's a running print and it will it look different. This is what a finished piece looks like. The, it has been varnished and it's nice and dry and ready for the findings. I'm figuring out what beads to use. Beads are from Itsy Bitsy as well. Uh, and some of the findings and some of the charms and beads I've collected for over 10, 15 years now. I'm trying to decide what beads to use for the circular base and uh, I feel it's taken away from the design and uh, I finally decided on a simple uh, kidney bean hook. I think it's called kidney bean. I'm not sure. I will leave um, a link to that um, in the description as well. Jasmine um, from Craftily Connect who made these bases for me, she told me that uh, she has ordered for earring findings and they will soon be in her store, available in her store. So that's uh, really great. You should check out her store for findings as well. Um, I was thinking since I couldn't use beads in this video, I'll make another tutorial. Um, this time uh, concentrating less on the decoupage part and maybe more on the uh, jewelry findings, tools and beads. Um, let me know if, if that is something that interests you and I can make another video uh, where I talk about that in detail. I'm just adding all the findings. Um, this these, this, uh, this particular earring is part of my unpaired series. Um, do check out my Instagram and Facebook handle. Uh, uh, I will leave a link I will leave the links to them in the description box below I have these for sale and uh, these were a very big hit this particular pair uh, has been a very big hit I love making mismatched unpaired earrings <laughs>
all right these are done um i forgot to take close pictures of this uh of these but i have um i have a video of me wearing them this is how they look like i had a lot of fun modeling for them uh, especially with social distancing i didn't uh, have anyone else to model for me here are some of the pictures of some other earrings that i made these have been a super duper hit i hope you enjoyed the tutorial um for the giveaway i have uh, i'm pick i'm going to pick two winners and i have two identical packs um and i have two identical packages um the packages the package contains uh decoupage napkins mdf base i have uh, beads and earring findings that is jump rings earring hooks and um eye pins um this giveaway is open for international and local artists and crafters um if you're one of the winners who gets the giveaway who wins the who wins the giveaway you will have everything you need to make the decoupage earrings except basic decoupage supplies like glue and varnish um you'll also need uh two pliers you'll also need two pliers the cutting plier and the flat nose plier um the reason i didn't include this in this giveaway was to be honest i had i didn't have any to spare i just had one set for myself um and um uh, ordering in right now would take make some time and i didn't want to delay this video um, any longer and i wanted to open up this giveaway for the international um friends as well um and uh, these are pretty heavy and um and i didn't want to add on too much bulk into my package um if if uh, i was thinking of doing another video um uh, with uh, where i explain how i work with uh, with the beads um maybe in the next month or so and i'm uh, and if people enjoy this giveaway and they're uh, enthusiastic about um receiving this package then i'm thinking i'll make another video and this time i will try and include the tools as well i'll choose two random winners from the comments uh, below and um i will get in touch with you for your address if i do not hear from you in say a week's time i will then pick another winner um so i can post them and post it to them uh, immediately let me quickly show you what i have in the package for the giveaway i have uh, i've made two identical packages that is i will pick two winners um i'm showing you what one of the package looks like i have 10 pairs of earring bases i have ovals square square with round with holes at the bottom rectangle with holes at the bottom square again a uh, bigger square two two sets of circles and a round rectangle remember these bases are pretty big because i like wearing big earrings and i wanted to make big earrings but you could get these customized to a smaller size so again there's are 10 pairs each um i have a set of napkins i have a set of 10 napkins that will go perfectly um on these earring bases i have uh, some cute succulents uh birds i have these tiles floral um floral again something some black prints indian designs blue pottery inspired some spring flowers and another um another design another blue design and i have enough 
jewelry findings to make 10 pairs and uh, a little more um, I have uh, I've included uh, antique bronze silver and gold findings I've included different types of hooks um, jump rings and eye pins with these you should be able to make um, 10 pairs of earrings easily and maybe have some left over for a couple of more pairs okay the last envelope contains beads I have again a lot of cute beads um, these will definitely last you many many projects um, I have given you a lot of uh, the favorite types of beads uh, in different sizes colors and shapes um, some of them are two pieces uh, for a pair of earrings some of them are four um, so you could make multiple pairs of earrings so that's it that's what the package looks like i have um, like as again like i've mentioned before i have uh, two identical packages like this that i want to give away um, and leave me a comment below if you want to participate and in two weeks time i will pick a winner and send these across um that's about it thank you so much for um joining me again and uh, i will see you in the next video